pick up from last week's episode where our characters are all watching Michael back in Dean's body snap his fingers. He proceeds to taunt them a minute and then they all jump him and slap some angel cuffs on him, imprisoning the guy. Only it turns out, uh oh, monsters are arriving and banging on the door trying to get in and rescue their boss. So trapped, the rioters, <coughs> I mean Sam, calls up a reaper to please help them get out of this situation. Uh, the reaper thinks about it and then applies a cheat code to teleport everyone back to the bunker. Once there, Cass and Sam go on an inception trip into Dean's mind while Jack does his best to hold off the approaching hordes. He eventually decides that he'll get in on the action and apply his own cheat code to just vaporize them all with a wave of their hands. Meanwhile, Sam and Cass have a quick adventure in Dean's mindscape before they have a brawl with Michael and lock him away for Dean to later use to milk maximum drama out when the season needs it later. Alright, let's get the negative out of the way first so we can end this review on a mostly high note. I am annoyed that the Reapers seem to be the new get out of jail free card for the show. And I wish the writers were using a bit more imagination. For example, it was just two episodes ago that Naomi talked about helping the protagonist out after Castiel saved heaven from Mr. Goo. So what if the group had called on her and... She used heaven and its teleporting doors to get the group out and into the bunker, or to just outside the bunker. Not to mention something other people on Twitter noticed, that at the start of this episode, Castiel acts as if he can't see the Reaper that Sam is talking to. When episode 510, Abandon All Hope, established that he does see Reapers. There are some possible explanations here, but... Why should we even have to bother with them? Why not just adjust the scene to have Castiel see her? It wouldn't change anything. It also bugs me a bit that Sam ultimately used a machine to jump into Dean's mind. When we know Cass can do that. For example, see episode 808, uh, Hunter E. Hiroshi, or the fact that he touches Sam to go into the mindscape with him. It just... It would have been nice to maybe have a scene where Cass tries that at first, and then they reveal that Michael has some kind of archangel mind barrier up that blocks them. And, and then Sam thinks about it and decides to see about trying a machine that maybe somehow gets around it. It, it would have been a bit of a stretch, but they could have sold it. Then... When they do go and perform this inception dive into Dean's mind, why are they doing it in the open, exposed library that's close to the bunker entrance, where monsters are coming? Why not, say, relocate to one of the dungeon rooms? Especially if they fail and Michael happens to get loose. You know, maybe perform this in a place that could theoretically hold them? Okay, I know part of the answer is budgetary, but the point I'm trying to make is that this goes back to what I said about the previous episode, and that when you want to have tension, you need to have the characters doing everything they can to gain every possible edge in the situation. It doesn't matter if it fails, it doesn't really matter if it's necessary, it's the effort that really matters. The audience won't believe things are desperate if the characters aren't acting that way. And one way people act when desperate is they try anything and everything that's possible. When there are obvious avenues that the audience can see but the characters aren't bothering with, it all undercuts this effort. Uh, for an, another example I meant to bring up in my review of The Spear, why haven't the boys been planning this with Naomi and the angels? Why not construct a cage up in heaven that they could lock Michael into and kind of turn him into a power generator for the place since it's supposed to be at stake, since things are getting desperate. Again, seeing this effort and having the boys debate about whether to kill or just expel Michael and what they can do, these little touches would have worked wonders for increasing the tension in the story. Okay, so I may not have many viewers but I'm becoming convinced that one of you out there is actually working on the show. 
I mean, I complain constantly about continuity, and what do we get? But in episodes so stuffed with continuity, I feel like I need a cigarette after it. I had fun trying to play a little mini game of name the episode when Cass and Sam were hearing the uh, voices in the big empty of Dean's mind. Speaking of, was it Dean's mind looked like the big empty uh, sly meta joke there? So yeah, my complaints are minor because most of this episode I really enjoyed and the sheer amount of continuity they used in this one makes the single misstep stand out more, but forgivable given the goodwill they earned. Heck, I like seeing Pamela again. You know, maybe a preference for Anna or Lisa to come back, but I know scheduling in the real world affects those things, so it was just nice to see another great character return and Pamela didn't get enough love in the show. Uh, I like that the monsters in this episode were smart and tactical and turned that one guy to their cause to use him as a double agent. And it's nice to see the cute Maggie back and, and to have Jack do stuff. I kind of like the ending with Dean, you know, besting and locking Michael up in his mind. Given what we see, this is very evocative of Sam taking control in episode 522, Swan Song. This does make me wonder... When Sam took control, did he lock Lucifer in the Impala's trunk? The show doesn't need to answer me, but given what we're shown in this episode, I like to think that. As for Michael himself, well, let's be honest, he's mostly just playing a restrained Lucifer. In fact, let's take a moment and talk about him. In case you haven't realized it by now, I really do enjoy Kripke's work. By far, his original five seasons are the best of the show, and for me, set the standard by which all the others are judged. No, he doesn't have a restraining order against me. <clears throat> yep. And I can admit, he had some missteps here and there. Of all his work and effort in the original five, his biggest misstep was, for me, Michael. We'll make you Michael. Now there are some excuses for this, and that's fine. There's some behind the scenes hints that Michael was a late addition to the overall mythos, whereas Lucifer seems to have been planned from the start. And that's fine, but regardless, the fact remains that in Season 5, Michael was extremely underdeveloped as a character. This is why, from the start of Season 11, when it was revealed what the true scope of what the darkness was, I said that Michael should have been released from the cage. He would have been the equivalent of a blank canvas for the show writers to draw any character they wanted on. Then, when the Crapsack world was revealed in season 13, I, I hope they might do something with Michael. Because, let's face it, the show has been stuck in a rut lately as far as arch villains go. They either keep bringing back Lucifer or revisiting a cheap copy of Lucifer, a grand secret greater evil that has a bone to pick with God. The exceptions are pretty much the Leviathan in season seven, who fulfill half of the criteria as a knockoff, and the British men of letters in season 12, who were ultimately shoved aside for yet more Lucifer. They did try... A little bit of something with Metatron in Season 9, but that was so underrealized I can't even really tell you how it happened. So now we have more characterization, more revelation about Michael, and what do we have? Lucifer. Again. But this time with the dash of Mr. Spock. I'm mostly disappointed because this was a great opportunity to try something really different. In Christian lore, Michael is considered to be the champion of humanity. So what if... This Michael from the other world was if Mr. Rogers had gone rogue. The TV show Angel had already explored this a bit in their season four, but that was still little as far as the actual character went. With Michael, we have a real chance of examining this. His idea that the alternate worlds we've seen in the show or just rough drafts of Chuck's is a interesting one from both a philosophical perspective and an interpretive tool of earlier episodes. So what if? What if Michael originally wanted to do right by man? What if this one from that other world 
after defeating his Lucifer, tried to make a paradise on Earth. Only... some humans probably rejected it. Fought against the angels, trying to help them. Even figured out ways to kill them. So Michael just starts hitting back a little. He doesn't really want to kill humans. Things just keep spiraling out of control, because they won't accept what he's trying to do for them. And through it all, Chuck never comes back. Then our boys come knocking in on his world, and something in Michael finally snaps. He, he really does like humans, that is, the concept of them, his ideas about them. He's one of those people that the quote was made for. I love humanity, but it's people I can't stand. The revel his dad just keeps making them and then abandoning them to suffer. It gives him a new idea. He resolves to fix things. He's not going to abandon humans like God did. He's going to rewrite the draft, so to speak. He's going to show Chuck how the story should be done. Even if he has to take over people's minds and make them appreciate his effort. This then would have some interesting interactions with Dean, who once said, people are crazy. What if Michael appealed to that side of him, the bit of misanthrope in Dean? What if he explained that he would make a better world? Instead of letting Dean go to crush his hopes, what if he let him go to be reminded how awful things are out there? And that what Michael wants to do is a good thing. That if Dean would just stop fighting, the two of them could make a better world where no mother would be killed in front of her children and no father would ever abandon his sons. Just imagine it, Dean. Imagine the world we could have. Dean has been through a lot. He's struggled with his own dark side. Back in season five, he even questioned whether his resistance was the right thing. So why not go back to that? Why not explore and let the characters debate what they should do? Let Michael make a pitch to Jack. Let him accept the boy instead of taunting and fighting him. Have Michael offer the little Nephilim a place in the new world. His first lieutenant. The one who will command his armies and forge a world where an unborn child isn't hunted to death just because of what he is. Last season, Jack demonstrated a distaste for death. Michael's comment that they've stopped death and enslaved the Reapers could be a suggested goal. They would stop death itself. Nobody would ever have to die again. Although, side note, this does make you wonder. If the angels in that world had control of reapers, how was there ever a war to begin with? Can't they just send reapers to assassinate every opponent in the resistance? <laughs> anyway, there's just so much potential rich and engaging drama here in this setup. The episode had a nice moment where Jack, caught in a dangerous spot, felt the need to use his power and save the day at a cost of a piece of his soul. I like that. And I hope we get some more examination on this dilemma. What if Dean was something similar? Instead of Michael locked up and raging at the cage in Dean's mind, what if he was calm, collected? Then as the boys face turmoil and strife through the season, Michael's voice could be ever present, whispering in the back of Dean's mind, let me out. I can stop this. We can stop all of it. A civilian lays dead, and Dean hears the whisper, I could heal them. A story like that, it wouldn't be easy. It would be a challenge to write, but if the writers rose to it, and I believe some of the ones we've seen could rise to that challenge, this season could have been one of the best the show ever had. Maybe even equaled Kripke's efforts. But this is more of a complaint of Michael in the general, so it doesn't really count against this episode in particular. Just a lost opportunity that we could have had. So, in the end, I give this episode four shells. It was generally competent with decent acting. Jensen did a great job playing both roles, and all that continuity porn definitely gives it a bonus shell. But the show still isn't taking full advantage of the resources available. There's some mistakes here and there, and we're still mostly retreading old ground. Only this time, instead of Sam, we're doing the same thing with Dean. Also, this title for this episode is just baffling. I, is it supposed to be related to Michael's motivation? <sighs> Regardless, it's still a step up from the previous episode, and 
I keep the rest of the season will work and strive to be the best that it can be. We'll see. Until next time, thank you for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe.